Hey, it's Heather, and today is a very good day for an adventure in gardening. Here we are in mid-July, and if you're a new gardener this year, right about now is the time that you must have realized that everything and all the things are out to get your garden. Everything wants to eat or ruin your efforts. Or, if you are a seasoned gardener, you've now remembered, oh yeah, everything is against me and all the things want to eat or destroy my garden. This year, the pest pressure, I, I mean, at least for me, and I would love to hear about you and where you are, but the pest pressure has been at, just insane. And it seems like all the things want to kill my garden. So, um, so you just have to be, be vigilant. You have to take that feeling when you started gardening or when you, when you wanted to garden in like March, you have to take that feeling and remember, that's what I'm trying to do. And you just need to keep going. You just keep, every day is troubleshooting. And if you have somebody in your life, like I have my sister and we troubleshoot all the time about the things and, and it's so helpful. And, and actually that's what I did professionally um, for, for years is um, I worked at a garden center and I mean, I would just be troubleshooting all day, every day. So I'm perfectly happy to help. You got something going on, let me know what it is. But today I specifically want to talk about tomatoes. I want to, we're gonna, we're gonna do a few things. I'm going to show you my new setup, um, how it works and how I'm staking them. I'm going to show you how I'm pruning them. Um, and then I want to talk about some very specific trouble that I've had with the tomato plants that I've never had before. Um, and I've had trouble with tomato plants in the past, specifically with blight, just as everybody does. I want to remind y'all that when it comes to growing anything, never close off other people's ideas or listening to other people about how they grow tomato plants just like every other plant um, because once you think you have it all figured out that's when you have trouble keep yourself open and never stop growing when it comes to being a gardener i want to go back a little bit and to the beginning of this year and to give you a little history on me and um, growing tomato plants so my husband and i own a very small little um, a company where we grow orga organically grown heirloom and open pollinated tomato plants and we start them from seed and we sell them online and have a little stand out in front and and it's great I meet a lot of really great people and I'm sure you can all attest to this statement this year started out like every other year it really did uh, but the challenges grew immensely, just as they did in everything. Am I right? It's like all the things, all the things. Oh, and by the way, we are a very small tomato plant company and we do not ship. No shippy shippy. Shipping kind of scares me. So, But if you live in the state of Connecticut and you're interested in buying some organically grown um, heirloom and open pollinated tomato plants, it's cheekytomatoes.com. So you can, you can look us up and we can chat and talk about next year for tomato plants. So we, every year I start my tomato plants indoors and, um, and under lights, I have this nice system that I grow them under and everything was going really well. It looked like we were going to have an early spring, which I was super excited about. And we sort of did have an early spring, but it never progressed. It like the groundhog said, just bring us coming. And I'm like, oh, the groundhog is ready. Groundhog, he, he didn't really know. But we did, we had an early spring, but then it stayed right there. It stayed there until almost June. So the tomato plants are growing in February. They're doing really good. Um, April comes around time to pot them up and put them in the greenhouse and they go in the greenhouse. And then the weather just, it just stayed stuck and we had wind, like crazy, crazy, crazy wind. And we really don't get wind like that here. We don't really expect it. And it was the kind of wind that would hit the side of the greenhouse. I mean, hit it. And it was penetrating every area. 
and no matter how much heat I put on those little tomato plants, they're like, mm -mm, it's not spring, we're not growing, we're gonna stay right here. So I'm like, I lost sleep over these tomato plants. I'm like, why aren't they growing? There are people that count on me. I need these tomato plants to grow. A whole lot of praying and stressing and fretting and um, and they just stayed there for, for longer than I was comfortable with and um, I was ready to just throw in the towel and just say, for, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, but I have to, looking back at all of this, like the, between the cold and the wind and, and all the crazy weather and the tomato plants not growing, I have to say that looking back, I totally, I'm, I'm thankful because I'm thankful that they weren't ready to go that first week of May, which is really when I want them to go to their new homes. I want people, you know, we're New Englanders. We play a little bit of a gambling game. It's like, okay, I know our last frost is supposed to be the end of May, but you know, I think we can do this. We can cover the tomato plants if it drops below 40 at night, but uh, it was dropping in the 20s. I mean, it was like really crazy. And so, um, so then I, I, I was like stressing. I was like, oh, my people can't have their tomato plants, you know, the first week of May when everybody else is selling their tomato plants. All of these big growers that have, you know, better greenhouses and better heaters and, uh, you know, and so I was stressing over this whole thing. And then looking back, we had a killing, a, a frost um, on Mother's Day weekend. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I would, my heart would have replaced all of those tomato plants for those people that had lost their tomato plants to frost. It really, I really would have done it. So the tomato plants weren't ready for that weekend, but they were ready on, in perfect timing. They really were. The end of May, they looked really good. They went to their new homes. I didn't get to get in front of people this year like I've done in the past. I didn't get to do any markets because of the whole, you know, pandemic thing. Um, but I still met really wonderful people and we did, and, and all the tomato plants went to their homes. And so behind me is my tomato test garden. This is where um, every single tomato plant that I grow, that we grow, um, is planted behind me and I save my seeds. Um, for the most part, I save the seeds. Um, I actually haven't bagged any of them yet. I use these little bags and I think I'm gonna get my ladder and my pruners and um, and I think I'll, I'll show you how I bag some of them to, you know, make sure that the seed is, is pure. Um, but I can't wait to show you the setup. I had this dream and my husband was like totally on board. He's like, let's totally do that. Well, I mean, he didn't say it that enthusiastic at all. I knew maybe it was a little, I, it was a little grumbly, um, but it got done and now it's done for, I'm, I'm using this, this system for years. Um, so, and I'm gonna show you the different varieties of tomato plants that I have growing. And this, this is a passion of mine. I mean, gardening is a passion of mine, but this, tomato plants I don't know it's just it's, it's really awesome I love growing tomato plants so uh, let's uh, let's go do a little work all right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna walk through and I mean how many tomato plants do I have I think that there's 40 planted here um, this is not all the tomato plants though I've got another 12 up top plus I have container tomatoes in pots um, and there are repeats down in, in this section here too because it's just, see I have matching cats there. Mm -hmm. That's Peanut and Piper. Um, I have repeats because they're ones that I know that I'm going to be canning, but um, pretty much everything, yeah, no, definitely everything is represented. So ta-da, here is my new setup. Um, so, I mean, I would have totally like done this myself even if he hadn't been on board this year but it would not have looked like this. It would not have been sturdy like this. It probably would have cut down some trees and, and you know, whatever, I don't know. So the idea here is um, by growing my tomato plants on string with one liter, um, I can plant them closer together at, with some pruning. And I mean, that's what I've done here. Um, I took the recommendation of 
uh, wild boar farms. Um, as far as the spacing, um, nine inches. I, I believe that's what it was, nine inches. So yeah, they're close. And today I totally need to prune them. I pruned them last week. I think I've actually been down here every day. Um, any leaf, and this is, this is for you tomato people, especially my tomato people, any leaf that is touching the ground needs to get trimmed off. And just because you did it once doesn't mean you're not going to do it again because you don't want the splash up from the soil um, on the, the foliage because disease will just, they'll use these leaves like a, a ladder and just go all the way up. Um, any yellow leaf or any, uh, well first let me show you. So, um, so you can see down here where I have taken and trimmed all of the the tomato leaves that were touching the ground, but these guys continue to grow. They get longer. Like this, even though he's not touching the ground, he's going to get cut today because it's just too low. Um, <clears throat> even after you've cut, you'll sometimes still get a sucker that, that will regrow. So that needs to be removed as well. Um, any yellow leaves or leaves with spots are going to get removed today. So let me show you. I saw when I walked through this morning. Okay, so I mean this to me, this looks like uh, it went too dry. This doesn't look like disease to me, but um, I'll be taking that off. Um, I'm going to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We'll start at the beginning. Okay, so my structure here on strings. My idea was to grow, oh, so I have tomato plants here, and I'm going to be growing some small melons across the top. So I've got some sugar baby watermelons right here growing on a string as well. And I just keep training them to go up. Um, this tomato plant right here, I believe is Brad's Atomic Grape. Let me just check. I'm going to be checking all of them because I haven't learned where they're at yet. Okay, yeah, this is Brad's Atomic Grape. Okay. I mean, what a beauty, right? We grew these last year, and I think I put six in this year. They were just a fun tomato to have for eating in salads. I like to make a really pretty salad, so... That's a great one. And yeah, you can see some of my fiber pots still because I keep adding grass to the top and then it just keeps, um, you know, it starts to, to pack down, to, to degrade. Um, so, all right, we're gonna go over the varieties first. So yeah, those are Brad's Atomic Grape here. Now, who are you? Okay, this is, oh yeah, all right, so, re, it, so I try not to put any of the cherry tomatoes down here, but I ran out of room up top for the cherry tomatoes. This video might be a little longer than, than I want it to be, but I want to show you all the tomatoes. Um, so, and I'm specifically, this is Isis Candy. Did I say that? No, I did not. Isis Candy is, uh, oh my gosh, it's so sweet and beautiful. And um, I'm not going to get as many as I should from a cherry tomato plant. It's a cherry tomato plant. Um, because I'm growing it with just one liter. Um, but that's okay, I'm saving it for seed. And this guy here is, this is chocolate pear. Okay, again, here's another cherry. But again, I'm, I'm growing one of everything, um, at least because I need to save the seeds. And this one here is indigo apple. Oh my gosh, you're so pretty. I cannot wait for these guys to ripen so I can see them then. One of my favorites. Okay, they're all my favorites. Okay, yeah. Black icicle. This tomato plant, oh my gosh. It's a great paste tomato, but um, my son-in-law, he loves this one just as much as I do. Just sliced uh, and eaten. It's just a great tasting tomato plant. So most of these I've tested already and I can say this is a great tomato plant. I highly recommend it. There are some that I have not grown before that I can't really speak for but they've been recommended by other people. And yeah so just still more black icicle here. 
All right, so the rest of those are black icicle. And this is a new to me paste tomato. This one is called Myona. Looking forward to trying it. I like the, I like the shape of it a lot. And I think I, yeah, I just put this one in. Hmm, all right, fine. All right, we're just gonna take a quick, quick pause. See the difference? I mean, you got the big guy, and then what happened here, Heather? Well, let me tell you what happened. This tomato plant is one of my test tomato plants this year. It is black vernissage. I grew pink vernissage last year, really liked it, super pretty, and I'm like, oh, I wanna grow black vernissage. And so the, the Canada Goose Babies came along and topped the first one. This is the second black vernissage plant. They just took the top off and I'm like, well, I cannot possibly grow it as a, a leader plant if the top has been topped. So I t ripped it out and replaced it. And then I don't know what happened. It got like this root rot. We got quite a bit of rain and, oh man, let's see. Anyway, it was like around the entire base of the tomato. I don't, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll just show you. I thought I was gonna have to replace this one. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to show you, but down in here, around the entire tomato plant, it was like, it was girdled. It was like totally stripped. And no, it has nothing to do with my string because my strings are super loose and I adjust them all the time. Um, and then the entire tomato plant wilted. You can see we've got some damage here still from the wilt, so all of these leaves are gonna come off today. And so I took the grass and compost and I, you know, put it up high around the tomato plant and look, it sent out all new roots. So it saved itself. It saved itself because I mounded up. And you wanna do that with your tomato plants. You wanna mound up the compost or the, uh, the grass clippings. I do not, I do not recommend hay or straw. I just, I just don't right now because of, um, uh, I'm not even gonna say, well, herbicide damage. Yeah, I said it, okay. I, and I've seen it in the last couple of years increasing in our area. So I, on, on your tomato plants or any of your nightshades, I, I'm not recommending that right now to people. So I was gonna rip this tomato plant out because it was completely wilted for days. It sent out its new roots and now look, Hello, we've got a little bud there. So, all right, you can stay. I did have one more to replace it, but not gonna. Right now, oh man, look at this. I didn't even see this. Right next to black vernissage is pink, oh, pink vernissage. Look at the little stripes, right? They look like little watermelons. I love this plant. So the guy with the yellow leaves here, this is early wonder. This is a new to me tomato plant. So looking forward to trying that one. And this one is Blue Beauty. Also one of the test tomato plants that nobody, nobody got to buy this one, but I did give a bunch of them out to people, especially the people who like prepaid. I like to say, hey, thank you for doing that. And okay, who is this? Ooh, chocolate chestnut. This one is chocolate chestnut. That's a beauty. This guy right here is a potato leafed tomato called st stupis. Now you might pronounce that stupice. I'm not sure, but I, this tomato plant we grew last year and a few years before that. This is a great tomato plant and it goes well into fall. It doesn't mind, it's a Czechoslovakian potato leaf variety. It doesn't mind the cool weather in the fall and it just keeps on, keeps on going. And it keeps its great tomato flavor even after the weather turns cool. So that's pretty awesome. I planted two of those. And this one is Brandywine. And you can see, this is one of the tomato plants here we have to go back and do some work on. I'll show you because it's split way down low. So I don't have one liter, I have two liters. This is German pink, one I've been growing for quite a few years and have saved my own seeds. I, I just, this is a great beefsteak style tomato plant. This is Wood's famous brimmer. And um, we used this one last year 
for uh, fresh eating and also it was great in sauce. Perfect tomatoes, by the way. The, this, you know, sometimes heirlooms like the brandy wine, they get the, you know, little, I don't know, nooks, crannies, segments. Um, but this Woods Famous Brimmer is smooth and perfect every time. Cherokee Purple. This one will, will have great color um, and it tends to be one of the earlier ones. Love this. And next to Cherokee Purple, uh, okay, see this guy? We're going to have to prune this. I don't know what they're doing over there. This guy, we're going to have to prune this, this leaf right here because it's resting on his head. This is one of my sister's tomato plants because I had a Cherokee Purple here and wire worms got its roots. I don't know why they picked this tomato plant in this spot and no one else, but my cure for wire worms is to stick a potato in the ground. So I did like a, I put, uh, cut up a, a, a potato and they go into the potato, but now I need to pull the potato out because this potato cannot live here. But this tomato plant is Berkeley's tie-dye and it's got its first flower. And it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. It's just going to take a little bit longer. This pretty little tomato is orange strawberry. This is one of my safe seeds. And thank goodness, because they did not have it available for sale, my, my normal seed supplier this year. It is a beefsteak style yellow tomato that does not, it has great flavor. It doesn't have that typical yellow tomato flavor. And I already know that this is another orange strawberry because I planted two. This is Pantano Romanesco. This is another one of those perfect, perfect, perfectly formed tomato plants. And the color is deep, deep, deep red. I love this. And then this guy is a classic beefsteak tomato. And I grow this one because it's one of the names that people recognize. But man, I'll tell you, you want to talk about, it just, I don't care, it is classic. You're a classic beefsteak. Just big and tasty and yummy. All right, so now let's talk suckers. All right, suckers. Suckers are branches that um, come out of these, where um, off the main stem and a, a leaf. And this will produce tomato plants, but what it will do is it will make all the rest of your tomatoes um, a little bit smaller than they should be. So most people will take and and trim their suckers off. Now when they're small, you can take and just pick them off, okay? But when they get bigger, like I'll show you, and this is really big, okay? Now find the main branch. And the main branch is the branch that has your your fruits and your flowers on it. The sucker is the one that just shot up out of nowhere. You see that? Okay, and yes, it will get flowers on it, but you know what? You're going to get better and bigger tomatoes. Trust me, for years I did not cut the suckers. I ended up with a mess at the end of the season, a big tangled mess, uh, and the tomato plants didn't look good, and, my, and I, I'm just telling you cut your suckers off. When they get big like this, you want to go ahead and you actually use scissors. Uh-huh. Yeah, you want to use sharp scissors. Yeah, use sharp scissors, okay? Don't be like me. Don't do what I just did. Oh, dear gracious. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> all right. So all of my scraps are going to go into a garbage bag. We do not compost the foliage from tomato plants, okay? So even if I'm throwing it on the ground right now, they're going in the garbage after. So I'm going to go through and cut all the suckers off. And I hope that that made perfect sense to you on, on where the suckers are at. I mean, er everybody's doing it. Everybody shows you how to do it, right? Um, it is. It is a little, like it's almost like its own little tomato plant. You could actually take this and root it and have a brand new tomato plant. So we trim our suckers off. Cut them if you have to. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to remove all of the, 
the leaves that are too low, the yellow leaves, and all of the suckers. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I stake, quote unquote, stake these tomato plants on how easy it is. And really, you need to do this like every other day if you're going to use this method. So I do not use cages, I don't use twine, or, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not pinning it to anything like I've done in the years past. I am simply, and I'm gonna do this one-handed, okay? You want to go, and I picked clockwise, I do all of them clockwise, okay. One-handed, Heather, okay. I am just moving the tomato plant clockwise around the twine. I'll do this twice. And it just stays like that. The tomato plant just stays like that. It's great. It is so great. I've never had such neat looking tomato plants. Now let me pick somebody who's a little shorter so we can look down. Um, all right, well, this is, this one really doesn't need to be done, okay? But here, I would just move the tomato plant clockwise, and it just keeps growing. I know a lot of growers grow their tomato plants like this. And I just come down every day and I just keep moving around the string clockwise. And this is a good one. Okay. Here's another sucker. I'm going to go get a, a better pair of shears, but again, the sucker is not this one because this is the one that has your flowers and fruit on it. If you look all the way down, the flowers and the fruit are coming off of your leader stem and here's your sucker. So I'll get better scissors before I do anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to have to recut them. Do it once. Okay, here's a great one here. Okay, going clockwise. Easier with two hands. And then I have to address the ones that I now have two leader stems for. And, you know, I mean, I could have cut one of them off early on, but like, look, this plant, it had like four, it split right there. This is orange strawberry, it split right down there. So I did, I cut two of them off. And then the other one, I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll just string up this second one by it. I got plenty of room, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So this is tomato plant maintenance. I really like doing it. I love, I love to go through and look at them and inspect them and make sure everything is going good. I also have fresh grass clippings that I'm going to be putting on the, um, around the base today. And I just keep mounding those grass clippings up the entire season. And then it turns into great soil for next year. Well, it turns into something good this year too. Um, I am a firm believer in grass clippings. And again, none of these leaves are going to go into the compost. They are all headed into the trash and I compost everything, everything except for tomato foliage. And at the end of the season, when the tomato plants are done, they go into the garbage. Tomato plant hygiene. I know I told you before that this is a great way to grow tomatoes if you just have one liter. And then I'm like, yeah, but I'm gonna have two liters on these certain plants. And I, I just, I, I guess I just can't let some things go. So um, I know it's probably not the best thing to do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So I'm going to just take the plants that have split. And there's just like, I don't know, three or four of them better split. So anyway, it'll be an experiment. And next year I'll be saying, oh, don't do that. Cut it no matter what, probably. 
So now I'm going to not fall. My mom's going to see the video and she's going to be like, you shouldn't be on a ladder out there all by yourself and no one's home. Hi, mom. I'm on a ladder. All right, so I'm just going to tie it up here. And then I'm going to run it on down here and I'm going to loosely tie it to that split stem. I'm trying to think and climb a ladder and hold the twine. And I'm going to start wrapping it. Okay, so now we're going to go on up top and we're going to look at all the cherry tomatoes. Now the cherry tomatoes, we don't uh, trim off the suckers on the cherry tomatoes. We don't trim off the suckers on determinate type tomatoes, which have a determined amount of tomatoes that are going to grow on them, and the cherry tomatoes, because you want lots of cherry tomatoes, right? Um, so that can make them unruly. Your cherry tomatoes can definitely turn into a big mess. and. I'm certain at the end of the season, I'll be like, oh, you know, um, there'll be a big mess. But I am using the Florida weave um, concept. Well, loosely, I'm using the Florida weave. It's more like the Connecticut uh, DIY, okay, the Connecticut MacGyver style. That's what I'm using. No. Uh, but anyway, it's based on the Florida weave, which is a great way of staking your tomato plants, especially if you can't build a great big you know, structure. So let me show you how it's done. So let me show you. Okay, so this is my version of the, the Florida weave. And basically you're just taking, you know, big stakes and then you're um, using the twine and you're kind of weaving. There's a method, Google it, learn the right way. <laughs> anyway, I've, I so far so good, but um, we all know that those cherry tomatoes are going to get taller than these posts and then what and then what Heather indeed and then what I do not know but let me show you what we've got growing um, so I showed you the chocolate pear down below um, and this is purple pear that I had very few seeds of where am I here I am and this one I'll be save definitely saving seeds from because um, couldn't find it this year I have three types of blueberries. Um, this is blueberry spoon that kind of just, uh, it, it made itself um, here. Where is it? This is a spoon blueberry tomato that I'm hoping to have available next year. I was waiting a few years to make sure it was, it was stable. Um, kind of sort of happened by itself here. I had a spoon, a current type tomato, and I had a, it just, it just happened. Bees helped. So um, they're, uh, they're slightly sweet. There's a ton of them on the plant. It's a great plant. I've had flea beetles on the tomato plants this year. First time ever. Do you see this? Flea beetles. Look more. Is that a flea beetle right there? No, but that is. See it moving? Oh, you little stinker. And the slugs. Oh man, don't get me started. Lettuce leaf basil. They like it very much. Okay, so the spoon blueberries and let's see. Is this the regular blueberries? Yes. Okay, so I do have Bradgate's uh, blueberries cherry and it's, it's down further, but this this one, I don't remember where it came from, but I grew a regular blueberries, a blueberry tomato. This is not the spoon one. This one's different. Um, different shape. And it just kept showing up year after year. And I'm like, okay, obviously I'm going to be growing you. That one was not available for sale this year either. I, I, I did the Brad Gates. This is blue cream berries. And this is um, one of the, um, the test tomatoes. I'm going to give it a try, see if we're going to sell it next year. 
This is Hartman's Yellow Goose. Loving it. This is Rosella, new to me this year. We'll go through again when they, when they start to ripen. Now this is so impressive. Oh my word. Okay, can you grasp this? This is Ildi. This is new to me as well. We did sell it this year. This is one branch. This is one branch. Holy mackerel. I thought Barry's Crazy Cherry was, you know, had a lot on it, but oh my gosh. So I think, I think Barry's is, it's at the end of the row. This is a yellow, a, a yellow cherry tomato. This is Brad Gates blueberries cherry. All right, so again, on these cherry tomatoes, for the most part, I know the ones down below, I'm growing on the leader, but I'm growing them really specifically for seed. But if you want a lot of cherry tomatoes, you do not cut off your, your, um, your suckers. Now, what you are supposed to do is you're supposed to cut, well, what I am going to do, what I am going to do is I'm going to cut off, again, anything that's touching the ground, anything that's turning yellow, and I will cut suckers off about, um, you know, at least a foot up because you don't want that happening down so low. So I'll be trimming these today too. And this is um, Barry's Crazy Cherry. And I did this last year. Man, I was so impressed by it. Great flavor and so prolific. And this is one branch right here. Now let me show you, I have a few in the back here. This is St. John's wort. I'm going to be harvesting this today and drying it for tincture and for tea. I get distracted. Okay. This is Mrs. Barton. This is a cherry tomato I love. Okay, the rest of these I believe are not cherries. They are just yeah, these are determinate tomatoes that I have back here. So that's why they're in the back row. Again, I'm using the Florida Weave on them. Early Wonder. Alaskan Fancy. It's my first year growing Alaskan Fancy. This is not my first year growing this one. This is Prince of Bay Borgies. Are there any tomatoes yet on this one? Not yet, but man, this was fantastic. What a fantastic tomato plant for sun-dried tomatoes. And I've got these container tomato plants that I'm, I'm loving now. I have them everywhere. This one is silver fir tree, um, and it is a determinate tomato plant, but it's got this really pretty kind of silver ferny foliage to it loaded with tomatoes. I had to stake it up with a, a thing here. It's in a tiny little pot. I, I had people this year, you know, uh, the tomato, the container ones. I have another container one called Red Robin. Um, it's in a hanging basket. I, I, we'll see what it tastes like. Um, I think it's going to take like three plants to fill a hanging basket though. Um, I won't even show it to you. Um, but loving silver fir, this one is actually small compared to the other ones, but I want to show you Orange Hat. And this was one that, this was one that I was surprised that uh, more people did not buy. Uh, let me see if I can turn it. I have this everywhere. It is as cute as a button and loaded with tomatoes. Um, great little plant. I have it in all kinds of containers. I've got it with ornamentals. I've got it by itself. I will definitely be growing this one again next year. It turns like a yellowy orange color. So was that tomato plant TMI or what? That was a whole lot of tomato information squeezed into one video. And we'll, I'll go back over the things and, and look at the tomato plants again without giving you a whole bunch of background next time. We'll look at them as they ripen. The, um, I think there are, 
There are over 70 tomato plants all over the place, whether they're in containers or in the ground. Uh, we grow a lot of tomatoes. I love to do it, and, but they take time. So, um, so like I said in the beginning, I'm hoping that you can you know, summon up that original passion that you had at the beginning of the season. It is never too late to regroup and get in there and give it your best shot when it comes to gardening and producing food. Producing food, is a, there's a learning curve to it. But um, anyway, the last thing that I have to do today is I'm going to take my little bags. See these little bags I got them? at a party supply store, you know, they put like favors and stuff in them. And I'm going to be putting them, um, this is part of my seed saving efforts so that I don't end up with cross pollination. Although, you know, I listen to some people like, oh, it's not necessary. And, you know, I just want to make sure that I end up with, with the same variety, especially if I'm going to be selling them to people. Um, so the key is, to find them before they start to open um, and then bag them and then daily and I learned this from watching YouTube videos you're just going to go through and give a little shake so that pollination happens to your tomato flowers so um, I'll show you a really quick once I get the bag on I'll show you what it looks like because I can't do it with one hand okay so off of the main stem this is a sucker so you see this one that's a sucker that I'm going to be cutting off. I have a lot of work still yet to do today. Um, and then this is your main stem that has the flower flower bunch on it. And I just slip it over top of that stalk and just give it a little tug and tighten it up. And that's it. Thanks for joining me today. And if you liked what you saw, then hit that subscribe button so we can stay in touch and you don't miss out on another adventure in gardening. See you soon.